My mama told me when I was a little boy I was wrapped too tight. She called me her little tornado and a bunch of other colorful things. And it's because when I was a kid, my, I got my education playing the guitar, listening to old, cheap record players that spun too fast. And I didn't know they spun too fast because I didn't know what Concert 440 was. So I just thought Jerry Reed and Chet and Merle were real fast guitar players. And so I used to tune my daddy's guitar up too high and, and I would chase him. And I got to the point where I finally caught him. And so, yes, I'm wrapped a little too tight and sometimes I play a lot of really, really fast, fast things. You know, I do a lot of, a lot of guitar licks. Uh, Uh, things like that that really aren't so musical, but um, and they're a lot of fun to do. And so that's really the reason that I, I played fast was that was because when I was young, uh, I had an adrenaline problem. Uh, they have these kids now; they give them drugs for it. But uh, back then, we couldn't afford them, so we got a record player and a guitar. I'll tell you, if you take the, the, the talents of Chet Atkins and Merle Travis and Jerry Reed and you want to have some kind of a collage where you put the three of them together, the best way would be to start would be Merle because he was really on the scene first. And Merle would pretty much play with a thumb and one finger. He would lay his fingers down and use just a thumb and one finger. And he would do stuff like this. He would just stroke up and down like this, catching two or three strings at a time. Sometimes he would use three just to catch a melody note. Chet, however, was a little more articulate. Actually, he was a whole lot more articulate. Chet was, Chet was quite the perfectionist. And he would alternate the bass and play with two fingers most of the time. And then came the Alabama Wild Man, Jerry Reed. Now what he would do was he would just jump all over the place and play real dynamic rhythms. And I'll run through a little piece for you real quick. I'll play it one time through like Merle, one time through like Chet, and then the last time like Jerry, and you can kind of get a feel for, you know, it's actually my musical foundation. This is how I learned. I base everything off of this. Here's a little Merle Travis. Now let's turn to a little bit of Chet.
to get wild with Jerry Reed. And that's how my heroes played. I think 1988, I entered the uh, Guitar Player Magazine's International World Guitar Competition. Just as a joke, just to see what would happen, I used a $125 guitar and a 50-cent Kmart tape. And believe it or not, I won. And they gave me a gold record for it. And Chet Atkins heard it. And they called, and uh, the president of his uh, society called and asked if I'd come to Nashville and play for him at a concert down there. And I went, and I was so nervous, because uh, not to play in front of him, because I never had a problem playing. But when he asked me a question, I couldn't talk. So I, I told him a dirty joke, and we've been friends ever since.
Yeah, uh, the one I got the gold record for was a song called Back Porch Boogie, which I ended up teaching uh, the boogie part to Chet in France. And he loved it, and he called me up one day and said, I remember that little boogie woogie you showed me? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I did an album with Mark Knopfler. I used it on that. He said, I won a Grammy for it, just wanted you to know. And I thought that was real nice. Then he asked me if I was still fat, and I said, yeah. And he said, well, that's too bad. I'll see you in Nashville. But it went like this. It's a nice little thing. You do the boogie. Then you do the chords. A little melody. And it has a little thing called the spider walk. Thank you. 
Sure. You know, one of the things that I like the most about the guitar is that you can, you can do a lot of different dynamic things. You know, um, if you think like a piano with this hand for your, your melody and your chords, and think with this hand as like a drum set, and each one of these is a kick drum or a cymbal or a snare or something, you can get a lot of different crazy rhythms and things like that to come out of the guitar. For instance, I have a song called the Buster B Boogie. I'll play you just a little piece of that, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of it. You know, the Italians call me the pistola, and uh, the French is the la machine gun, and uh, in England it was Yankee machine gun. So, yeah, they, they expect high energy, fast, hard-hitting stuff, and that's because when I started off doing this for a living, I was not nervous in front of the audience, but I, I had my adrenaline very high, and I've since learned to calm down and uh, talk to an audience and, and show them that... You know, it's much harder to play a beautiful song than it is to play something, you know, 900 miles an hour. And uh, they're just now finding out now that there is another side to me, a softer side. And uh, I'm glad because I don't know how many years I have of them bullets left in my clip to keep going so fast.
Everybody um, is limited by that. For instance, Tony Rice has a very interesting way of holding his right hand because he has had his uh, hand has been damaged. Well, I'm no different. My hand has been damaged. I've got a man-made tendon uh, for my little finger here. It's fishing string from here to here so that I can move that finger. And you can see I, it's hard for me to actually control that finger, you know, very well until I get it in this position. Then I can do certain things with it. And there's other things that I can't do. So you'll find that I'll, maybe I'll do chord voicings that the ordinary person wouldn't do. I'll search harder, okay? I'll look more in depth because I'm looking for something I can reach without hurting that hand. Now, for instance, that chord is extremely painful to me, so I'll find other ways around it unless it absolutely has to be there. And everybody's that way. I mean, we all have our, our limitations. You learn to live with them. So I play the guitar with a limp. Well, when I was a kid, my oldest brother Ron was still in, t you know, in the house uh, living with us. There was uh, nine of us living in a very, very small house, and he had a room next to the one that me and my three, my two brothers shared. And this is a funny story. There was a hole in the wall, you know, uh, and I used to crawl under the bed and crawl through the wall, and I would lay under his bed and listen to him play the guitar until I fell asleep, and I did that for probably three years before I ever picked up a guitar. And he was playing to old Merle Travis and Chet Atkins albums, and that's where I fell in love with fingerstyle. 